What's up guys? Welcome back to uh, Almost Functional 40k. Uh, today we're going to be uh, going over my ATC list and trying to uh, find how we can make it better from the experience I had over the weekend. And uh, then we're going to be uh, building a death watch list and I will uh, give you guys, uh, get your guys opinions on which one you like better and I should run at the uh, upcoming RTTs this month. Uh, and we'll see how whatever we come up with does. Uh, I just want to thank everyone who's been watching, liking the videos, commenting. It's uh, kind of something I started just kind of because I was bored. Didn't really expect to get too many people watching or even commenting, but like the fact that I've been having people from like across the oceans over in like Europe and stuff commenting, like that's just really cool. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for that, but, uh, don't want to waste too much of your time, so we're just going to hop right into this. So, uh, as you remember, it's, um, Space Wolves, but I'm running Gladius. Uh, we had a Primaris Librarian, he's the Warlord, he had the Bolter Discipline, uh, we had Ragnar with Frostfang, uh, sorry, the scrolling on this thing is really weird. It won't let me just go down a little bit. Uh, actually, it might work better if we do it this way. Alright, so we got the Librarian. Uh, he did what he was supposed to do. Uh, he buffed the uh, Desolation Squad, so I was really happy with him. Uh, Ragnar came up really key in a couple games. Uh, a couple other games, he didn't quite make it where I wanted him. But uh, overall, I was really pleased with Ragnar. Uh, Ballista Dread. Uh, it's just always good. Some anti vehicle. Uh, he is uh, one of the things I am considering dropping because I just have so much in between the Desolations and the Vindicator and Ragnar and them in combat. I have other ways to kill vehicles that I may or may not necessarily need him in there. Uh, Blade Guard, uh, if I'm running Ragnar, they have to stay in. They just, as a unit, they're just a thing. They came up big in a couple games. Uh, Desolation, amazing, useful in almost any matchup, good against Horde, good against big stuff. Uh, and Scepters, very useful for us uh, scoring secondaries with the three and steep strikes. Uh, the Infiltrators, really helpful in the uh, Gene Stiller Cult matchup and other matchups that have like uh, Deep strikes like the custodes keeping the little uh, Alaris out and stuff. Uh, the scout snipers I got three of those. Uh, the infiltrating and non-targeting is really great. Uh, they are going to legends, uh, which I must don't believe is happening till the new book, so we can still run them for a little while longer. Uh, Thunderfire cannon uh, against combat infantry armies, he's amazing. Against like vehicle heavy or just stationary shooting armies, not as useful, but. Uh, he does, like, in a couple matchups, like, uh, the Custodes, Double Lich Guard, Necron, stuff like that. It's almost a must-have for those matchups. So I really don't think I can drop that. Uh, the Vindicator. It's one of my favorite things in the list. He just always does work. Uh, and then the Whirlwind. Uh, probably gonna cut the Whirlwind. He got me some secondary points by doing like uh, investigate signals in my home quarter, my table corner a couple times. Uh, some decent indirect shots, but just like he always did a little something by this. It's one of the things I don't feel like I would have really missed if it wasn't there. Uh, and so the problem I found in a couple times is just Ragnar squad not being able to get where I wanted them. Uh, the Desolation squad in like the mirror match against ultramarines uh putting them on the table just really makes it a first turn matchup if someone else has desolation and they can pick up yours uh but then if you put them in reserve they don't come until turn two so if you go second they get two rounds of shooting theirs before you can do anything back to them so those are the main things i think i need to fix just some more tactical flexibility with those and then once the Inceptors come in on turn three, I don't have a lot 
of mobility to get to the opponent's zone in turn 4 and 5, unless I walk Ragnar or something across the board. So that's another thing that I think I need to address, uh, just because some of those secondaries, if you draw them late game, and I had that in a couple of my games, get like behind enemy lines or something like that, and you just don't have a way to get there and score any points on it. So the first thing I think we're going to drop is the Whirlwind. And then I think we will drop one of the three scout squads. Uh, we'll drop the one... I don't know if I put it in here, but one of them was running a missile launcher. Uh, I don't believe I want to drop any of the infiltrators. Keep the inceptors. Desolation Blade Guard. Alright, so we're going to drop the... Ballistus. And that gives us, what is that, six, 305 points to play with. All right, so one of the main things I know I want is a Calidus. Uh, one, because that uh, Vect ability is great, but her uh, go off the board and come back from Deep Strike with Lone Operative, just, I believe she'll really help with that late game uh, mission play. And the other thing I was thinking about, I think I really want to do is add a drop pod. You do bring in the uh, risk of against combat armies letting them circle it and not get shot. But I believe it's just versatility what I can do in this list. I can put Ragnar squad in it. If, I, if they don't have a really fast combat unit that I'm worried about threatening my line or if they're just all shitty no combat... I could drop them in the pod and rapid ingress them somewhere to have them a better chance to get in a position to be useful. If they do have fast combat elements, I deploy Ragnar, I'm still on my side defensively. And I can, if they don't have a counter to like my desolation or something, then I'm really worried about them getting shot. I just throw like the scouts or infiltrators or something in there and just bring them in turn one if I want to. Or save them till turn three if, I, you know, this gives me some options there. And if I am in that Desolation Mirror or something like uh, Eldar where they got a lot of indirect that can hurt the Desolation squads or, what's the other one? Oh, Knights where they can get angles if you don't have terrain where you can really hide them. Uh, you could put them in there with the character, which I can't do as a 10 man. So I believe, unfortunately, to get that versatility, I'm going to have to go down to a 8 man. Or a nine man, so eight guys and the sergeant. Uh, trying to do this one here so everybody can see it, but this app is a little wonky casting the. Uh, there we go. Alright, so this run, a nine man squad with uh, the Bolter Discipline Librarian, which still hits pretty hard. Uh, the only downside of that is sometimes you're dropping your Warlord. But you still just drop it defensively. It just They know you can drop it anywhere. But really it's just to uh, let you put it on the board and get first shot into Desolation Marines or something like that that you're worried about just picking you up too early. Uh, and then that leaves us 220 points. Uh, so we lost the Scouts, which I believe... Uh, we kind of replace with the Calidus in a way. Uh, she can still infiltrate. She can still blow an operative. Uh, she doesn't have as many shots, but she's better in combat. Uh, and then she has to pick up and come back down anywhere on the board any turn. Uh, so I believe we actually have an upgrade there overall for what we're trying to do with those units. Uh, the drop pod. Uh, we lost the whirlwind basically for the drop pod. Uh, which just gives us, so we lost some indirect fire, but we'll be able to get other units in better positions or protect them. So I think that's a worthy trade. Uh, so the other thing we lost was the Ballistus. So we lost a decently tough body with some anti-tank shooting. Uh, so my thought on fixing that was to go up here and take Bjorn. So, Bjorn, and that'll take us 2,000. So, that's uh, another Dreadnought body. 
Uh, let's go look at his data sheet. So he doesn't have uh, as many wounds. He's only got eight, and he's only T9. But he, uh, let's see his abilities. Uh, he, he gives you a second effect, which is huge. And he, uh, uh, they're not showing it, but he has damage. And then he has a five up feel no pain. So I believe he actually in the end ends up being more survivable, especially against big shooting. And then uh, melee weapons, six attacks, strength 12, nectar three damage. So he gives us some um, backfield melee that we were missing with uh, the ballistas and stuff. So we could send Ragnar's unit out and still have some backfield combat. And then ranged weapons, we got options. He comes with the assault cannon. Uh, probably not the option because we lost some big anti-vehicle shots. And we got the desolation, so we don't really need more anti-infantry, I don't believe. Uh, he always gets the heavy flamer. Uh, so we got the plasma cannon. Uh, it's a decent idea, but you risk hurting yourself if you really want to fire the big shot. You can do the, uh, the hellfrost, which has the dispersed. And then it's got the uh, focused which is, all right, let's see if I can get this to show up. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, guys. This is, I thought it said this, this is only one shot, though, strength 9, neg 3, 5 damage. Or we can give him the Melta, which is short range, uh, two shots, strength 9, neg 4, d6. He gets in half range, it's 2, or plus 2, so it's d6 plus 2. So it's half the range of this, but double the shots. Hits the same, same strength, better AP. Uh, for one shot, it's this, probably, if you're in half range, about close to the same damage, but it has higher potential. Uh, but with two shots, you probably have a better chance of doing more damage, especially if you're shooting an Oath target. Uh, and if they got an invol, just double the chances to get them to fail a save. Uh, last cannon, it's only one shot. Twin links. If this was two shots, this would be the auto take. I don't like that it's one shot though. Uh, and since we're kind of using him as a backfield protector, I think I'm going to go with the multi melter on him. Uh, just because he's going to be hiding most of the game. It's really just going to be popping out, popping stuff that gets close to threatening the line. Uh, so I think in that situation, I'd really want the uh, melter shots. Uh, all right. All right, so we drop the assault cannon, and we give him the multi melta. All right, and then that gives us the two vect, which in certain matchups is just devastating to people. Like a lot of people can deal with one vect, you stop their one key stratagem, but if you stop their two best stratagems, it really just changes the way they're used to play in the game. Uh, especially if they're defensive stratagems, they like. Uh, Makes them sometimes makes them a little more scared to go into stuff. Uh, so this is that list. It's going to be Bjorn, the Librarian, Ragnar, six-man Blade Guard, nine Desolation Marines, the Drop Pod, two Inceptors, two Infiltrators, only two Scout Snipers, Thunderfire, Vindicator. Uh, I really like that. I think it should play well. Um, the scouts and the thunderfire. Once uh, the marine book comes out, we're going to have to uh, really rebuild this list. Uh, but points will probably change anyway. So on some stuff, so the list once the book comes out, you're really rebuilding everything anyway. Because a lot of times abilities will change slightly, war gear change, enhancements might change. We'll get a new detachment. So this is just something to try to get us to the book, which I believe is coming out. By the end of the year, probably maybe sooner, because I know Tyranids are first, but those should be the first two books, because they were in the uh, starter pack. But I really like this. Uh, I think it could do well. But um, now we're going to uh, look at the Death Watch list. This is uh, based off of what uh, Siegler was running at ATC. Uh, had some talks with him about what he was doing with that list in why he ran things the way he did, how they performed, uh, what, if he thinks it was just an ATC list, if it's worth taking the singles. Uh, 
He told me he thought it was worth taking the singles, that it plays well into most stuff. Uh, does have a little bit more of a skill cap, and uh, I do not have the... Uh, stop saying... Uh, I don't have the land speeders or the storm speeder, so those I will have to replace in the version I build. He also wasn't able to take uh, Imperial Agents because they were being run on another team, and I don't know if he will make the change, but I know he mentioned possibly making a change to include some into his uh, list. So we'll go down here to Marines. We'll go to Death Watch. We're going to do Strike Force. And actually running the actual running the Black Spear Task Force. Uh, so we will call this the Dread Watch because they are still my Dread Wolves. All right. So so the base of this list this starts with a captain, and then can we scale down this way? Yes. All right. Yep, so we got three characters, which one of which is the Phobos, and then we're going to go find the Watchmaster all the way down at the bottom. All right, so then we add the Watchmaster. All right, so then uh, one of these guys will make Warlord, and we also want to give... He ran Thief the Secrets. I am not going to do that, I don't believe. So I'm going to be missing a little combat off the captain, but I'm going to give him the Tuma Ectoclades instead of the Watchmaster. Uh, you really can do it either way. But this, uh, the Tuma Ectoclades, it uh, gives you a second oath of the moment, once per game. And it's not like Illumins, you don't have to kill the first target first, they're just both oathed for the whole turn. So it's 40 points, which is a little expensive, but that's a really nice ability. And then, uh, War Gear, he was running Claws. I am not going to run Claws. I am going to run Thunder Hammer Shield, just because I personally really like that. Uh, and my Wolves have always had Hammer, so that just fits into what my stuff does. Uh, Watchmaster just comes with a Vigil Spear. Librarian does so. Not putting anything, enhancements or upgrades on this. These guys just come with what they come with. We're just bringing them for the abilities. Uh, the Watchmaster gives his unit the ability to uh, fall back or advance and still shoot. And he also gives me a Vect. Uh, you'll see, I'm, you know, just like last the wolf list we worked on, I'm really feeling the Vex right now. It just limits what other people can do back into you. Excuse me a second. Sorry about that. Alright, so then the uh, rest of the core of the list is starts with the uh, Proteus kill teams. Which are the uh, kill teams which... Uh, <coughs> have Terminators, regular bikes, and <clears throat> veterans on uh, firstborn marine bodies. And I went past it, didn't I? I know the alphabet. Alright, there they are. So, take a Proteus kill team. Alright, so then uh, it starts with five veterans. We're going to give one of them an Astarte shield. Uh, and a long vigil. And then we can give, for every five guys in the unit, we can give two frag cannons. So we're going to make it a 10 man, so we'll give them four frag cannons. Alright, but now we gotta drop these options. We drop the bolt gun, the close combat weapon, and the long vigil melee weapon. Alright. 
All right, so then uh, we'll go down here. We're going to add, what was that? Sorry if this scrolling is annoying. It's also annoying on this end, but don't know how else to do this. All right, so we'll give him There we go. Long Vigil melee weapon. And then we're going to add four Terminators. Alright. So we're going to take three Assault Cannons. Uh, and Thunder Hammer Storm Shield. Alright. So I need to fix a Kill Team Veteran model, Biker model, Terminator model. I guess the thing, one of the things I was having trouble with is the, uh. The war, the way you gotta load out this war gear is weird for these guys. Alright, so what's wrong with the Terminators? Storm Bolter. Alright, so we gotta replace the Storm Bolter. So the Storm Bolter goes away. Oh, we need to give them power combat weapons. Alright, no, not the Power Fist. Where's the combat weapons? Oh, there we go. We want three Chain Fists. Alright, so Terminators are good. Now we gotta go back to the uh, bikes. You see me the first time I was trying to figure out the uh, how to do these guys on the app. I was so frustrated. All right, so that's the Terminators, the bike. So one of those gave him the long vigil. And the twin bolt gun. Most combat. Alright, so now he's good. And then what did I do wrong on the veterans? Veteran or your options. Alright, so default. So we need to give them those? Nope. Alright, so they come with bolt gun, long vigil, melee. And what do we replace to do this stuff? Bolt gun and log vigil with long vigil and starter shield, we did that. What are we replacing their frag cannons? Bolt gun and long vigil. Alright, so they should have four combat weapons left. And this guy. Yeah, should we count five combat weapons? Did I only do four or something? There we go. Okay, I only did four. Alright, so then two of these. Uh, these really key in with the uh, kill team strats. Uh, especially with you have the captain to do one for free, so you can basically pick up both of these units at the end of your opponent's fight phase and bring them back in via basically deep strike on your turn. So just let you warp them all around. You can give them, they have Kraken, Hellfire, and another type of round, so you basically can give them a plus one AP, plus six inch range, really nice. You can give them anti-infantry 2 plus, anti-infantry or anti-monster 5 plus uh, which doesn't help the assault cannons because it doesn't trigger devastating wounds or doesn't work with devastating wounds weapons so those aren't good but or that one isn't really the one you want to use all the time because you do like those devastating wounds from the assault cannons but the uh, plus one AP and extra range is really nice. It helps you get those frag cannons in half range because you're going to 24 inches on your gun. So now you only need to be within 12 instead of 9. And the other one is ignore cover and assault, which can be big in certain situations just to be able to advance the squad and and then still and get ignore cover. So that's really the 
core what this list is designed to do just warp these two big tough units around like the frag and the assault cannon do all your most of your shooting damage you got the chain fist and the thunder hammer so if you do need to go in and then you got a character in each one that's decent in combat but you try to keep the terminator the vet the terminator with the storm shield the veteran with the storm shield and the bike and the character in uh cover with getting cover so that if people do shoot at you they can tank the wounds and you still have all your shooting left so that's uh we got there so then we still got a thousand three one thousand thirty points uh, so what do we want to add here we'll go down we can add oh we definitely want the desolation squad and we're not going to do the drop pod we're going to run a 10 man we want an inceptor squad even though you have the other two units warping around, they're normally going to be needing to shoot, so you can still deep strike the Inceptor in to do the actions that aren't technically actions, but they're actions. Uh, I'm going to take an Incursor squad. In his list, he had, uh, in Siegler's list, the one, I'm kind of basing it off of that playstyle because I really liked that. I had the Lance Speeders to give plus one to hit and stuff. This squad can do it, and not just for blast. Uh, they're a little harder to get in position because they're not as fast as land speeders, but they do have scout and stuff, so you, you won't get them all the time, but if you can line it up for one or two key shots early, because all they have to do is get one hit, uh, then we're going to take the infiltrators, take two squads, because they're just, they're good in so many matchups. Uh, what else? don't really see. All right. So let's go flesh out the Desolation and double the Infiltrators and see where we're at. All right, so the Desolation, Sergeant, we're going to give him the Vengor Launcher because that's just what we do. No, not super crack. We want Vengor. All right, and then we're going to go down here and make this a nine man and then we'll go down to here make this nine make this nine drop make this nine oops nine drop all the super frag or yeah super frag and then go get the super crack all right so that puts us at 1605 Uh, the Inceptor Squad, we're going to make them Plasma. Uh, same reason we did it in the Marine in the Wolf List, because that's what I own. Although, with the sustained hits and stuff, I believe Assault Molters might actually be the better way to run them currently. Uh, invalid War Gear Configuration. Oh, i got to do the Sergeant and the Squad. Okay. We knew that. Alright, so. And then drop the assault bolters. Alright, so I think we're just going to keep it to one Inceptor squad for now. We'll see what points we get. Uh, give them. The really only option they have is just to take this haywire mine. It's free, so there's no point not doing it. Just gives you an option to possibly do some mortal wounds, uh, and extra mortal wounds against vehicles. Uh. And then we'll take the two infiltrator squads. We'll give them the helix and the comms array. I rarely ever, I don't think I've used the comms array yet. Because I don't strat them many times, and I've probably, one or two times I have, I probably forgot I bought that or took that. And right, so I'll duplicate that. So we'll duplicate that. So that gives us two infiltrators, the two kill teams. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing we did in the other list, take the Calidus. Uh, there's some definitely crossover between these two uh, armies. I got the double vect in each, got the Calidus jumping up and down, got the Inceptors, I uh, got the Desolation Marines. 
Uh, just change where the combat and some of the other shooting comes from. Like the uh, Proteus is basically do most of that for the whole list. They're the best combat unit in the list, and they're the uh, best shooting unit in the list. Uh, well, possibly Desolation, but once you put all the buffs and with the mortal wounds and stuff, uh, the Proteus are right up there with the Desolation, and they're just more maneuverable. Uh, so that leaves us 190 points, and this is where I have gone back and forth on a lot of stuff. Where this, So this is where I'd really like some people's input to uh, see how to flush this out. I've thought about going double exaction squad just for two little cheap units and then throwing in a second inceptor squad which uh, puts me at 1995. Uh, I've got 190 points so I can take two 95 point units so I've thought about eradicators, eliminators, uh, suppressors, uh, the version I think I have right now that I think is the one my first thought on testing uh, you guys let me know if you agree is going to be a squad of eliminators it's the sniper rifles and the uh, instigator carbine on the sergeant so they can uh, shoot and move I just think with the infiltrate and being able to double move just gives some tactical flexibility and their sniper rifles are a little better than the scouts uh, but they can be targeted so that's a trade off there, but they get that double move, which is nice. Uh, I thought about the eradicators, but with the strength nine and the slow speed, I ran some of them early, and they were they were hit or miss. They either did really great or nothing. So I'm like a little iffy on them because they're not reliable. Uh, the suppressors look pretty decent to me. Uh, actually, let's go look at the suppressors. So we're going to add. Eliminator squad. We'll look at the eliminators first. Oh, I can't look at them here. All right, so we'll go down and add the suppressor squad, then we'll go back and look at both of them. Yeah, I wish you could click on and look at the units here instead of having to exit back out to the other screen. Other sh screen. Well, I can speak. All right, so then we'll add the suppressor squad. Uh, my first thought when I look, I was like, oh, suppressors suck. But that's 9th edition. I haven't put them on the table in 10th edition. So I don't actually know. Uh, so suppressors here. 12 inch move, which is really nice. Uh, only T4, 2 wounds, 3 up saves. That's pretty generic. Uh, but their weapon is 3 shots, hits on 4s, strength 8, neg 1, 2 damage. Oh, that, and a 48 inches. So that just gives you... So backline shooting, uh, they're heavy, so if I'm stationary, you're hitting on threes, although with their speed, I don't know how stationary you're going to be, they're easy to hide and pop out, uh, but the other thing I really liked was this ability, uh, suppression fire, so basically in your shooting phase, after you have shot, select one enemy unit, and this is enemy unit, it can be knights, it can be infantry, there's no restrictions on this, those hit, so you don't have to wound or do damage, you just have to hit them with one or more of your autocannon attacks, until the start of your next turn, while they're on the battlefield, that enemy unit is su suppressed. While they're suppressed, each time a monolith unit makes an attack, subtract one from the hit roll. And it's not just shooting. This is melee or combat. So just a quick little unit that can move 12 inches, shoot 48, has decent shots, decent damage, like 9 strength 8, neg 1, 2 damage shots. Like, that's not insignificant shots. And you can give and a, a key unit in your opponent's army neck one to hit, and then they have deep strike. So it just looks like there's a lot of flexibility to this squad. If they have lots of tiny units, you're like, oh, I'm not super worried about the neg one. You can deep strike them in somewhere, use them for mission play. Uh, they got a lot of two wound models that you know only have like a three up save or something. Pop some of these in there, pick it up, pick it up. I mean, even in the stuff that has better saves, nine shots at strength eight, you're getting some wounds in. Uh, I just really think there might be some play here, so I want to give them a shot in 10th edition, because the cup once or twice I tried them in 9th edition, I really didn't care for them, but maybe a lot of times those are the units that GW gives a little bit of a glow up, so we'll see, so I'd like to see how they do, and I got 
two to three units just sitting on my shelf, so it'd be nice to put them to use. I could take two of these and drop the eliminators. I could take two eliminators, could take two eradicators, could drop one of these four eradicators. Um, I can't remember what else there was. I think there might have been another 95 point unit I was looking at. Uh, let's see, go out of the suppressors. So what else do we have for 95 points? Uh, bikes are 80. I looked at some lieutenants, but the lieutenants give you lethal hits. And putting them in the Proteus teams, lethal hits just takes away your option to fish for uh, devastating wounds on some of your hits. So I really didn't think that was the play there. Uh, well, I'm looking for 95 points. We got... So yeah, the Eliminators, the Eradicators. I thought about doing the two exactions and maybe a Fortis kill team. I didn't really... The Fortis kill team just didn't seem to... They're like all Infiltrators and stuff, but they don't get the Infiltrator ability. So it's like, just didn't... The Proteus seems to be where it's at. Um, I'm, I'm sure... There's an Indominator, I looked at that, just... Didn't really care for the Indominator. We could take Inferno squads. Take another Incursor. Oh, we could take uh, Intercessors. Give us uh, Sticky Objectives. A Reaver squad. I looked at a Reaver squad. All their abilities aren't that great. You make them take Battle Shocks. Give Neg one Battle Shock in your command phase. But none of it happens, like, in the command phase, and your opponent, like, they happen in, like, the combat phase, not in the command phase, so if you do it on your turn, your opponent gets it back on their turn. If you do it on your opponent's turn, they've already scored their secondaries, unless you're scoring bottom of turn five, and that's, like, a rare situation. So the ability really isn't that great, and they're just an okay combat unit, and they don't have great shots. Uh, they do get deep strike and stuff. They can ignore terrain and stuff with their movement. So there is some things there, just didn't, I don't know, just didn't seem like the right play to me. Uh, and then, yeah, we got the suppressors in. Uh, could have taken the Thunderfire, but I was trying to build this list without stuff that's going to Legends. Um, veteran Bike Squad. That's not a horrible thing. I got tons of bikes. What can you actually give? I don't think I actually even looked at this. I'd be 10 point downs if we ran this, but what does the veteran bike squad do? Because it would be cool to put a bunch of my bikes on the table. So 12 inch move, T5, three wounds, OC2. OC2 is nice. Uh, ranged weapons. What kind of options do we get for ranged weapons? Bolt pistol. Long Vigil ranged weapon, uh, one shot, uh, two at 12, strength for zero one damage, anti entropy four, devastating wounds. All right, that's interesting. Uh, twin bolt gun, that's on the bike. All right, so I don't see any, like, real super great options there, although that Long Vigil is kind of interesting. Uh, melee, just a combat weapon, long vigil melee weapon, strength 5 next to 1, it's not bad. And the Xenophase Blade, strength 5 next to 1 damage, but devastating wounds. Alright, do they get any good abilities other than, I'm assuming they have Turbo Boost? No, just Turbo Boost. Attached unit, I'm assuming. I'm attached to, alright, so only Outriders models can join. Uh, unit, I'm assuming it's a three-man. Yep, and you could up it to a six-man. But 85 points, we're only taking. So three-man bike unit. I think I like the infiltrators and the suppressors better. Uh, just getting a little more better shooting. And being infantry, they can run through a building. So even though bikes have the 12-inch and can auto-advance 18, they do have to go around buildings and stuff. The suppressors have fly, the infiltrators... Or the eliminators can infiltrate. So I don't think we would go veteran bike squad. So we will delete them. 
And yeah, the other only other option was some battle line here. We run Assault Intercessor Squad. Uh, we don't have to point their veterans or heavy intercessors or intercessors to give us the sticky objective. I don't necessarily know if we need the sticky objective. We got the, uh, what do we have holding our back line? So these guys are going in squads, running out. Desolation, a lot of times we'll be sitting back there. Eliminators are up. Inceptors deep striking. Incursors up. And we could leave one infiltrator squad back. Two Proteus, the suppressor. Catalyst can be back there if we need her to, and then warp out later. Uh, so we don't have a single specific dedicated sit back unit, but any of those units could fill that. We could put eliminators back there if we needed to. The suppressors could sit back there, jump out, shoot their 48 inch shot. Uh, so I do see a reason to take intercessors, drop one of these, and just have a unit dedicated to sitting there. But I also have units that are the same points that I could sit back there. Like the Eliminators, if someone doesn't have a lot of characters, or I don't think I need that shenanigans in the movement, I put them there. Suppressors can start back there. Calidus can sit back there for a while, and then warp out when someone else. Desolation can sit back and just shoot from there. Uh, so I like this. This is the one... If it was just straight up to me, this would be the one I would run at the upcoming RTT, just because... The wolf list is just a slight tweak on what I've run, and this is just completely new, so I'm kind of excited to uh, see how this plays. Whereas the wolf list, I kind of have an idea how it plays, because it's the same core, just some tweaks. But you guys let me know what you think about this last 190 points, or even any other options there, and uh, what list you believe you would like to see me run, you think would perform better. And, uh, yeah, so just let me know. Hit me up in the comments. I normally try to respond to most of them. And, uh, yeah, then the tournament comes up, not tomorrow, but the uh, Saturday after. So in eight days, I will definitely, uh, probably do a day before video, let you know what list we decided on and stuff like that. And if for some reason I came up with any cool ideas or tweaks between now and then, and then I'll do a wrap-up video beginning of the week after, probably Monday or Tuesday, uh, just depending on how work and stuff goes. But thank you guys for hanging out. I uh, really enjoy you guys let me just run my mouth and talk about Warhammer. And I will see you guys next time.